In today's tutorial, I will show you how to use the sky replacement tool in the Luminar 4 iPad photo editing application. In the first part, we will go through all the options and controllers in this tool. And then in the second part, I will show you the full workflow from replacing the sky to exporting your image. Okay, now moving into the application where we're gonna look at the actual tool. As you can see, we are already in the editing module. And for the time being, we have the traditional toolbar on the right side of our screen. Now to change it and to turn it into the sky replacement tool, you need to tap on the cloud icon on the little controller on the left side of the screen. Once you tap on it, that will change the toolbar into the sky replacement tool. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is the sky library located on the lower part of the toolbar. Here, we can just go through by simply sliding the library up and down. At the beginning, we have the sky collections that comes with the application. So we have the blue sky, stormy sky, lightning skies, and so on. When we go all the way to the bottom, you will notice a section called your own skies. So as you guessed, you can bring your own sky and use it on the images. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second, but first let's go to the top where we're gonna select one of the blue skies for this specific image and replace it. So let's go ahead and tap, for example, on this one right here. And as you can see, it only takes a few seconds when the application scan the image and replace the sky. So it really is this fast. So imagine you're on holidays or on a trip, you have an image you wanna quickly share on your social media. So you bring it into the application, you adjust or swap the sky, export it and share it. But coming back to our library, so you select the sky by simply tapping on it. Once you tap on the sky, you notice that there is a little icon that come next to it. Now, when you tap on that hard icon, what it does, it takes the sky and place it in a new collection called favorites. By doing that, basically you're creating your own collection on the top of the list so you can quickly access it. And this is great for skies that you use all the time. So for example, let's go through the list. If you have a sky, let's say in the sunrise section that you use all the time, you just tap on it, click on the heart icon, and it will be placed in your favorites section. So just like that, you can tap on it here and use it on your image. Now to remove the sky from the favorite section, all you need to do is to tap on the heart icon again, and just like that, it's placed back into its original collection. So let's do that again with this guy as well. And that's that. Now let's again select this guy here and let's go to the bottom of the list where we're gonna look at the Your Own Skies option. So the application offers the option to use your own skies and to add them, what you need to do is to tap on the icon with the plus sign on it. When you do that, the application will open a new window with the Apple Photos. Here you can select the sky you wanna add into the application. So let's say this one here. And as you can see, it will appear in your own skies option. The rest is exactly the same. You just tap on it and it will be used for the sky replacement. Now, when you tap on it, you can see it has the same heart icon for the favorites section. So you can add your own skies into the favorites section. And on the top of it, it also has the bin icon. Now, as you guessed it, when you tap on the icon, what it does, it removes the sky from the application. So let's do it one more time, plus sign, then the sky, and then we tap on it to select it for the replacement. So this is it for the sky library. This is how you use it. This is how you control it. And now, since we have our sky replacement done, we can turn our attention towards the controllers. Looking at it, it's located on the upper part of the tool. And actually the replacements come in three sets. The first one, the one we are looking at right now, helps us to adjust the sky orientation. Then when we slide towards the right, here we can refine the mask of the new sky. And finally, if you slide one more time, you can make further sky adjustments. 
Now, starting from the beginning, let's look at the controller where we can adjust the position or direction of the sky. Now, the position of the sky is basically controlled with this little joystick. You can just tap on the yellow circle and now move it in a direction where you want the sky to move. So if I go up, the sky will move up. When I go down, clearly the sky will move down. And in the same understanding, when we move towards left, it will move to left. And then again, when we move towards right, it will move towards right. Just like all the controllers in the application, when you double tap on them, they reset back to the original value or the position. So you can do that here as well and start from the beginning if you're not sure about the adjustment. Now here in this part, there is one more option that you can use and that's to flip the sky by using this little button in the bottom right corner. And this is very helpful, especially when you need to adjust the direction of the sky following the direction of the light or shadows. Now, moving to the second option, and that's the mask refinement. Now, we have a three controllers here, which are basically used by simply dragging them up and down. And notice when I do that, when I adjust the first controller, you will see this little information panel on the top of the screen. Now, that information panel will tell you the name of the tool as well as the amount you are adjusting. Now, looking at it, we have a three controllers. So the first one is called global. The global adjustment help us to adjust the texture blending in the scene. By increasing the value, we will amplify the amount of the new sky by adding it into the scene. By bringing it down, of course, we will decrease the amount. Then the second controller is called closed gaps. And this slider helps us to address the minor imperfections and gaps left by the replaced sky. And then finally, the third controller is called Fix Details. And what it does, it helps us to correct the minor imperfections along the edges of the new sky. Now on this image itself, it works quite easily as there is not many details or very intricate elements. So we can't really see the difference. However, I still want you to know what each of these controllers does. So let's just reset them again by double tapping on them. And let's move into the third set of the controllers where we can adjust three things. With the first one, we can adjust the brightness or the exposure of the new sky. Now moving to the second controller, which helps us to control the warmth of the sky. By dragging it around, you can make the sky warmer or bringing it the other way around, you can make the sky cooler. And finally, the third controller is called Defocus and it allows you to blur the sky. Now, why would you use this? Well, it's very useful when you're using a shallow focus with a foreground object. So when you take it and adjust it, you can basically make the sky softer. And to finish it off, just like many of the other tools, you can use the on and off button in the top right corner of the screen, which allow you to switch off the sky replacement completely. And by doing that, you can either remove the adjustment or you can easily see the before and after for this specific tool. Okay, now moving to another sample file where this image will help me to show you how the sky replacement tool creates reflection. So for this, we have this image right here where you can see the beautiful mountains with the reflection in the water. But what happens when we replace the sky? So for this, we're going to go again to the bottom of the list, click on the plus sign and add our own sky. Once we do that, we're going to tap on it to select it and allow the application to replace the sky. It only takes a few seconds and the application will replace the sky. But not only that, it will also create a reflection in a body of water on your image. So if the application recognizes the water, it will try to create the reflection there. Now the rest of the adjustments are exactly the same using the same controllers. So this was just to make sure that you aware that the application does the reflection for you. Now, before we're going to continue, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our brand new Luminar 4 iPad Complete Guide. 
this interactive 66 page guide will help you to unlock the full creative potential of this application. Completed with details, instructions, images and even video tutorials covering every single tool in this application, this ultimate handbook is a product that you don't want to miss. To top it off, if you purchase it today, first of all, you will receive a free 12 months update of the guide as the application develops and you will also get our popular custom sky starter pack with skies designed specifically to be used in this application. Now, if you want to get it today, you can follow the link in the description to get the best possible price or you can find out more about it on our website cleverphotographer.com slash forward luminar for iPad. Now, in this second part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you a workflow of using the sky replacement on more advanced example. So let's move into the sky replacement and let's start by bringing in our own sky. Now you already know what to do. We're going to tap on the plus sign and select a new sky from our favorites section. So I have the sky here. We're just going to tap on it. And once it's imported, we're going to tap on it and use it for the sky replacement. It only takes a few seconds and just like that, we have the new sky. The first thing I like to do is to adjust its position. So let's have a look if we flip the sky around uh, what we like the most. I quite prefer the second option when the darker part is on the left. So we have that. Now looking at the new sky, you can clearly see the direction of the sun rays. However, it's not in line with the sun we have on the image. So we need to adjust the direction of the sky by moving it towards right. So let's take our joystick and move it towards right carefully. I think somewhere around here. Once we make the adjustment, let's just pinch in and zoom in to see the horizon as well as some of the small details. And for me, everything looks good. So we double tap on the screen to fit it back into our window and we can continue. Now we don't have to adjust the mask because everything looks good. So let's move into the last part where we can add a little bit of warmth by using the white balance controller or warmth controller. And we can defocus the sky just a little bit using the defocus option. And by doing that, we are finished with the sky replacement. However, we are not done with the edit because there are a few more steps we can add to make it a little bit more believable. So let's move into the editing toolbar by tapping on the wheel on our left side of the screen. And here, let's start by opening the Enhance AI tool. Once we replace the sky, it's quite good practice to use this wheel just to match everything nicely together. So nothing crazy. You don't want to go really high. So let's just go somewhere around 20. Once we finish, we can close it. And the next thing we can add is a little bit of extra golden hour feel. For this, we're going to use the landscape tool and simply use the golden hour controller. Again, you want to be careful here. I wouldn't go higher than 10. One more time. Let's close it. And finally, in this part, let's go into the develop tool where we're going to add a little bit of dark vignette to close the image. Let's have a look. If we bring it down, maybe somewhere around minus 30 will look quite well. Don't forget that you can double check the before and after for this specific tool by using the little on and off button in the top right of the screen. And once we are finished with the tool, we can tap on the top of it and close it. And finally, let's use the photo filters by switching the wheel on the left side of our screen. And here, let's go to the bottom into the creative section and let's try one of the filters here. Let's check the genius by tapping on it or maybe the candlelight. Now the candlelight looks quite good. So once we choose the filter, we can then adjust the amount using the amount controller. And that's that. Now the photo filters are really helpful to blend everything together. So if you can try to use them as they will really finish the overall look. Just like that, let's have a look at the before where we started. And all you would need to do is to tap on share and share the image with the rest of the world. And with that, we are finished with today's video. 
If you did enjoy this video, then make sure that you give it a like. And if you have any question about Luminar for iPad or Luminar Neo, then write them into the comments under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any of our future videos. For today, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and I can't wait to see you next time.